Hello everybody, welcome back to Cougar City Gaming. Today we are doing our Tales of Trivia Tournament Report for August. And we have Volt here helping us out. How you doing, Volt? Hey guys, doing really good, thank you. It was a fun tournament, to huh? <laughs> oh, it sure was. It was, good time. it was a fun tournament for sure. So um, we're going to uh, go through a couple of games here and, uh, you know, kind of see what's going on. So what do you think? This is the game between Mac Daddy and uh, Yeet Racer. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's an interesting matchup. I know Steve's, he's a very uh, strong player in the cards, that's for sure. He loves his Grandmaster deck. Always picks that. And uh, he's got to watch out. So... He'll patron check you as quick as he can. Does that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, he's a really good player. Nag, I know, is still kind of new, but she's still kind of underestimated. She's good as well. She's really strong. Yeah. Um. I mean, what what do you think? Um. What do you think, Mac Daddy, has done in this tournament that that basically kind of got him from the ground up into becoming such a powerhouse in a way like, i think it's just he works out he knows what he's gonna do two hands before he's even done it you know okay. like some people might say that it's you know it's a bit of luck because it's having but you can control the team he does that very well and you know he he's really good with numbers and you can you, you can just tell he's just like doing the, the maths in, in his head as it's going along and you know instead of just grabbing that instant card grab that but I think about other cards and so he's definitely got a lot going on that you that most people would oversee and that's what makes him a very dangerous player to play against him you always gotta keep your eye on him he's grabbing you know and the way he's gonna play that game because you know he, he's really good at adapting with the team as well people pick um what do you think um we, we're gonna talk about Yeet for a minute um what do you think mm -hmm is going to take for ye to to potentially grab a spot in in the tournament uh in december what do you what do you think she can do to to get there well first off you gotta come up with a strategy suits your play style the most and then the best thing is just to keep showing up and playing as many games as you can getting that experience against other decks as well um leveling up a lot and testing out all the decks there's a lot of different decks in the game, should I say, and a lot of them suit different play styles that everyone likes to play. So, you know, like for instance, um, she likes to really, I've noticed she really likes to grab these cards really early in the game, master cards, and, you know, she likes to just pump them out as quick as she can. But, you know, after playing more and more, you learn, like, which cards are more valuable to grab than others. You know, like, there's really good valuable cards to is like some of those the green that hit his end but you need a three combo green hand to like really make the most of it so that's more of a mid to late game and you want to grab so that's something you learn you're playing the, you, you learn that the more you play where you know you want to grab those really cheap really high impact cards early on to um to really benefit and set yourself up for later on you know Oh, of Sorry. course, of course, of course. Now here we have uh, we have a game between Jen and Yeet. Uh, this oh. this was another exhibition game. Um, Jen actually did really well this tournament, even though she lost mm -hmm. early on. She completely dominated that losers bracket like like a champ. Um, I really yeah. do think that you know if she if she works at it pretty hard, like that's that's another up and coming player that could potentially like just be kind of like a silent assassin in the works mm -hmm. to nab one of those spots um what what do you think um would be what what is one of the things that jen is very strong with in the game so far very strong she's she can play multiple hands like uh decks right i mm -hmm. know she really enjoys using the Khajiit deck but i pushed her to try and open up her like understanding because the best way to understand other decks is to play them and she's done that and she adapted her playstyle quite a bit instead of using the Khajiit deck which is, is a really strong deck but it takes a lot longer to build up your deck a lot of those cards are very expensive and you kind of you know bewilderment you, you put nothing 
punching cards in their hand, but it takes a long time for them to really take it, and you can count it. So like, the biggest thing is like is to learn to counter what the other person is doing, to pay attention to what cards they're grabbing, not only what you're grabbing, but what they're grabbing, and you know, like doing the math, like okay, they just got you know a volley, which gives you three power. Now I need to grab something that's equivalent or better, or I play the gold deck and try and out out gold them and buy everything on the tavern if it pops up. You know that's um, that's something that she's still working towards and planning. Um, and once she grasps that, like she's pretty close, she's she's getting there. And like I said, she's she's an underdog. Yeah, ob- obviously, she's she's you definitely know. um like later on the show we're gonna show you like she's she's on the players to watch list for sure Mm -hmm. um you know she's she's getting some points and she is racking them up and the point Mm -hmm. race um even though it's not going to be as close uh necessarily but i don't know like it might actually end up being a pretty tight race at the end depending on how many people play um you know how many tournaments they play and sometimes you know they get lucky enough to win that seat early or you know Mm -hmm. if if you're like JP that says I'm gonna wait till November to play. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. that's gonna be an interesting yeah. um, thing to to see for Is sure. Putting pressure on yourself, right? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, you know, he hasn't played against people, and he doesn't understand it. Some people, for instance, using Jen as an example, she's playing another game here against Steve, but mm-hmm. you can't underestimate anyone. A, the turn is like so strong. Like right here in this hand right now, you got a siege volley or a toll of flesh. Like that right there, to, he went to, he went the siege, so you know he's going to go the. Back. So you can't do anything. You have to pull it and see my like, huge siege. I think that was a mistake on her part. She should have tried to grab that. Mm-hmm. But oh, she's trying to make her deck smaller, so but she needs cards first to start doing that. So she has the right idea. She's got to implement that a bit later on, you know. But yeah, for. For people who think they're just going to come in the end like JP and just clean the floor with people, because he is pretty good at the game, but people learn a whole lot of different strategies mm-hmm. and stuff coming in. And, you know, I don't, especially Jen, on the other hand, I, I don't think she's, you can't count her out yet. She's in there. She's in there having fun too. Like she's winning, having fun, not really taking it too serious, but she's just becoming a serious, like, competition. So. You know, there's a lot of people, like, from our first tournament to this tournament, like, I played everyone in my, my matches, and you can just tell playing people that they're aware of which cards are stronger to go, and they still got a little bit to go, but they're almost there, you know? Ooh, that was a tough one for Jen. She just cleaned the, she just cleaned the tavern for uh, Steve there. I mean, I read, that's, that's one card you do not want to see flop out of your hand. <laughs> no, I <laughs> I definitely try to like um, get that card off the tavern, um, yeah. either in my side or just completely get it off um, as soon as mm-hmm. I can before my opponent gets it. They are going to nerf that card. That's that's they another are. thing. They need to. Um, instead of the three power is going to be two power. Um, the the cost is going to stay the same, but it's going to be two power in each. I still think that card is going to be played but it's not gonna be as big of a jump um Mm -hmm. maybe you know something else will get priority over that card now um yeah but i still think it's gonna be a pretty strong card just in the game period so you know i'm excited Mm -hmm. i'm excited about about that now bolt you are number one in the top five (laughs) in the point hunt Uh um you know it's it's you you have you you (laughs) You have been I in top to two. Exactly. You've been in top two. But uh, hey, right now if you don't win, you know, if you keep getting those top two, you're definitely guaranteed a seat in in the <laughs> first um chair. Cause you have twelve points at the moment. Donut is the other person in the in the point lead. He's he's six points. So you have a pretty strong <laughs> lead over <laughs> Donut. Then Madame Meow has four. Um, she's an up-and-coming player as well. Oh, uh, yeah. But just think, so say the next tournament, yeah, I got a great big lead, but then let's say I win that, then bam, then don't not spam, he's right in. Exactly. Well, exactly. You know, so it's still anyone's game. It's still and anybody's game. showing up and keep playing and having fun. Like, 
We all sit there and have fun. It's not, you know, even me and Mac Daddy Steve, who we, I was playing against in the finals of the game, which was a really good finale. And we went all the way to the third game, and, and um, yeah, him and, like, I think he made it last week. He made it to the, I think I versed him in the semi final. Yes. Yes. I did, yes. Yes. And, um, and then I beat him 2 0, and then he comes back and beats me 2 1. Yeah, just, it could be anybody's just, game. I mean, exactly. like Madame Meow actually went undefeated until top mm-hmm. four today, so she's definitely a player to watch in you know in the top five point hunt. Uh, if she keeps playing, like I have no doubt in my mind, she might actually either snag a monthly winner um, mm-hmm. seat or snag it in the point race. Uh, same with Jen. I I really do think she's her and Madame Meow are tied with Frozen third fourth mm-hmm. and the fifth and there's some other people that are tied as well you know with four points but mm-hmm. they're not showing um as much in the you know in the playing they're not going as far as those yeah. three have uh before and i mean those three are are the players to watch behind you and donut for sure so you know people <laughs> We get a tournament like we had a pretty good showing today, mm-hmm. and we're really gaining in numbers. So that's that means you get to play more and more matches, which gives you more and more points. Exactly. So, you know, you get to a point where you know we could be in a tournament and you play ten matches. There's, there's ten points right there. You could be you know third or fourth. If you win that week, then you could be in the number one slot. You know, yeah, I could have a bad game. You could you know I could get a bad time. So um, flop on the start, and I get knocked out first ring. That just opens it up. It's, it's so much could happen. I, anything can happen, and everyone's so close. And you know, the more and more people that show up, the more and more chances. You know, you could get like an underdog coming out of nowhere as well. Oh, you of know, course. JP, for instance. Yeah, we we saw we saw Madame, Madame today. You know. Yeah, yeah. She wasn't in the first one. No, she? she was not. She was not yeah. in the first one, and she's already yeah. like pretty much four points in in the manx and yeah. you know getting ready to and go she missed them she mm-hmm. missed them up mm-hmm. so you know and bam she's right in there so she's definitely tender now i know um boss um has been in these tournaments this is her second mm-hmm. month to play she played you um she got a little bit unlucky and you mm-hmm. know had to play you um but Hey, you know, it happens. She she did win against scoring, um, but you know, she had to pay play you in the second round. What is something that in could have potentially flopped this game around? Was there anything that could put in, like flop this game I around think, in her favor? Yeah, I think the cabin control is really good by getting that first that first card and then like I get that first something and I put the pressure on them to try and, you know, they have to flip the tavern in a way to try and catch up. So if she's got the slot on me straight away and then I'm pressured and then I'm trying to re- rotate the you know, and she gets the um, where I can't afford to get it. Like a midnight raid right here mm-hmm. you can see, you know, that I got that straight away. And so that was already a, a rough game for her to start. And you know, just having control, knowing what all these cards she can start patron checking straight away, start flipping those. So, you know, uh, what did she go? She went red and grandmaster. Yeah. Yeah. So, you... so, like, right right there, she grabbed like that. She's minimized her deck. But she's doing that too early. You know, she doesn't have anything. So, you so... think you think if she would have started patron checking earlier, um, she pro- it probably would have been a lot uh, closer mm-hmm. of a game? That's good, though. Yeah. So, I mean, boss, yeah, that's, that's something that you could work on, you know, just tavern control and mm-hmm. kind of, like, reading what your opponent is doing and potentially like pressuring them into yeah. getting a little bit faster with their gameplay like don't let them play their game play but, let yeah, them play let your them game. Play game exactly so exactly and that's how you can tell between a good player and an average player is the way if you if they just you sit in there and it's like you're playing a, a bot for instance you know like you can grab all your stuff you can do whatever you want to the tab and you don't really have consequences but when you're playing a really good player, they make you think, you can tell straight away that they're like, flipping out cards, getting rid of cards, you know, trying to, even just to the point of like, most people would just start putting Ritz into all their hands, 
maybe you don't. Maybe you buy a shitty car just to turn the grandmaster, you know? Mm -hmm. And start doing stuff like that and turning that into power. But it definitely depends on the patron. Like, there's some really strong ones, like, the black deck now, the patron, the red Now, which, which patron, do you remember which patron you picked? Which two patrons you picked in this mm -hmm. one? I, I, so, just, just told him and I said to myself that I'm going to just play one play style for all my games. Mm -hmm. I did. I played the Red Eagle and I played the Pro. Okay. Because you can minimize your deck and start getting some Pro cards and then you can just delete all your Ritz and other cards and just pump out the Pro. Now that works really well in those mid to late games, but when you're playing someone as aggressive as, for instance, Steve, you don't have time to do that. You're already on your back foot like, mm -hmm. trying to play that. And the one game that I actually was able to extend out of it, I beat it. Oh, we'll, that, we'll then... get we'll get to see those games here in a minute. <laughs> we'll get to see okay. those games because we're gonna actually watch um, all oh, three yeah. games. And we're kind of break uh -huh. it down, break it down, kind of see where, you know, you might have gone wrong, where maybe mm -hmm. uh, Steve just outplayed you in a way, or where, you know, you, you outplayed him. Like, that second game was absolutely your game, um, in my mm -hmm. opinion. And, you know, he was saying, oh, I'm going to play you two games. But <laughs> you, you know? showed him, you know, hey, um, you know, yeah. it's not. I, I mean, in my opinion, I think um, considering you picked the Red Eagle and the Crow deck, I think she actually mm -hmm. picked... A decent set of patrons to kind of work with that um i yes. like i like the red patron a lot and then the grandmaster quite a bit mm -hmm. with this combination so um i mean another thing that i i probably would have done instead of the grandmaster or even the red deck maybe pick the rajin deck um the yeah. kitty cat deck um mm -hmm. or even the deck green cup. deck <clears throat> and yeah, that the the Khajiit deck, mm -hmm. as we all know and call it, the mm -hmm. bewilderment deck, it counters the crow deck yes. so hard. So mm -hmm. if you see someone pick a crow deck, you can pick that. And you don't need to pick the Grand Masters. You get a lot of gold with that, that hand or that deck. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. So the it's just, it takes a little bit to build up, but that's when you have a red, the, like the red deck, the Saint Helena, yep. Helena and deck to like get you going. So you're still in the running at the so, you know, and another thing is, like, as you see here, what I just did to boss here, which was kind of a bit a bit cruel, but it's understanding the tavern, like, I knew, I was playing the hand before I even had my hand. Like, there was a, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> there was a, um, use an extra patron, mm -hmm. so I played my card, my higher card, and then I was sacrificed that, and then I had enough gold to buy it again, and then I bought a card off the tavern as well. And then sacrifice that, and that was like, a, like a fourteen, fifteen power hand. So, you know, it was just playing stuff like that. Like I, I used her own deck against her. So, you know. And I mean, the, the it, it happens. It happens to you know to does. anybody. Um, that is something that you know that boss. You know. I, she she'll probably need to work on and um to be honest everybody you know has something that they could work on period in these in this game because i mean i've seen the leaderboards i don't see you both in first place so obviously somebody's beating you and mac daddy in that spot so everybody can has you know the 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 will to to get better and i mean this mm -hmm. is this is the final match right here um mm -hmm. You know we're gonna we're gonna watch the whole thing. We're gonna watch the whole thing, uh -huh. and well, I'd like to uh, add in really straight away. He got the the metaphor, the claw, mm -hmm. the claw straight away. So instantly, uh, he's already put me on the back foot, and straight away I had the mid power. So usually people would get the rip, but there was a... I was like, I need to grab that straight away and give myself a chance to like get that power advantage straight away. And then he just flipped in the scratch. And, you know, there's another scratch. So now I can grab that to, like... I'm straight away, I know I'm grabbing that without even... Yeah. You know, and I can also get a rip. So that was very valuable. And we can catch up. Now I technically have the advantage going on him right now. Now, my mental thinking right here is I want to get the Sijik to cycle through my deck as quick as I can. So that I can get my crow cards really quick. I've only got one card in my deck. There you go. Scratch. But he's thinking about what he can do next already and 
at this point, um, it was it's still with mono in mono, right? I have that little power advantage with like the scratch. And uh, yeah, it's uh, at the moment we're just feeling each other out. I feel like the first match we're both just feeling each other out. At the okay. This and, uh, this is probably a good reason why we have the best of threes in top four exactly. as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. It makes all the difference, right? And right here I got unlucky, so I was hoping to get my scratch with my my two purple cards, and it just did not did not want to give it to me. Now, after the match, I wish I paid more attention to that. I know how strong that currency exchange is right there, but I didn't think a lot of people don't understand that card fully. That second combo to activate an extra patron mm -hmm. is super powerful. And right here, I made a mistake too. I think right there was a mistake. I had the gold, then I sacrificed my Red Eagle default card because I didn't have Midnight Raid or anything. I was like, I need to make gold because I want that currency exchange before he gets it. And unfortunately, I think he gets it before me, but I get my. I get my CG card, and it's the upgrade. Yes. Is your extra gold, mm -hmm. so that's that was a valuable pickup for me. But at this point, he's got a couple of crow decks. He's got some grandmasters, so he's got the gold. Bam, he grabs it. Now at this point, I'm like, okay, that's not too bad. I can probably come back from this point. The tavern isn't in my favor at all. And then there's the midnight raid, and this is where I'm like, oh my god, I can come back right here. But the luck of the tavern. He gets it, <laughs> and right there, I'm, I'm wheeling. I'm in trouble. Yeah, you know you're in trouble I'm, here. I'm in trouble now. He got the he got the currency exchange, and he got a midnight raid in one hand. Now, right there, it's pretty much like, in my mind, I'm like, I've lost this. I got a I got nothing on the flop. He's got a perfect hit, and I need to make power, and I need to make quick. So I'm like cycling through, looking at my deck, contemplating I can either get six golds, like it's like I can get the scrying globe and try and reset the tavern, bam, I get lucky. But the problem is earlier I got rid of the one card, so I can't combo that anymore, so now I need contract cards. Now I don't know if Steve knows that, but I believe he does because he plays very smartly. He grabs all the contracts. Sure. Now, in that last hand that you just played, I believe you had the gold five uh, cast card, right? And you mm -hmm. could have flipped the uh, the Grandmaster. Um, That's true. I probably would have flipped it there because, in my opinion, that card is, is, is good for like a one turn kind mm -hmm. of thing. Unless mm -hmm. your deck is full of gold cards, period. That's right. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I probably That's probably something that I would have done just to kind of catch him off guard in a way and mm -hmm. put a little bit of pressure in the prestige race at least it's true yeah. so i don't know if you caught that um or not but i i probably no, I would have done that this definitely was on my on my mind or even here i can probably grandmaster it like there's a lot of things that go through like i know i'm in trouble at this point he's i need to make power so like i can have that that's my best power but then he gets you know, the tavern's just laughing in my face right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And I, it's only a matter of time. And he's already got one patron in his hand, which is Red Eagle, but I can't waste my clip. See, so I get Midnight Raid in my hand right here. I'm gonna have, I got Sidgic, so I can cycle through my deck pretty quick. Problem is, I have no contracts on my actual thing. And he just got like a 16 gold hand. And he got rid of that. So, you know, that not a lot of people play the Sidgic deck. So, you know, having that Patreon up is also kind of like. So, right there, I look, oh, I only got one. And there he goes, that Midnight Raid. Right. There's, <laughs> there's that Midnight Raid. Right. Here's the slow bleed that. I, but what he does really well is he's, he's playing, like I said, he's playing like three, four hands ahead. Like, yeah, he knows. He has the. I also have the gold advantage, the currency exchange, and the patron advantage mm -hmm. with that combo. You know, that's I'm trying to just get rid of valuable cards for him. Yes. So I'm I'm playing in his hand, you know, but there's not much more I can really do. So 
Like right now, I'm just trying to remember. Yeah, I think I did bad maths here. I was trying to get the. Yeah, that's right. I draw. Yeah. But it kind of screws me up for my next hand. So, because then I don't. Now I'm not able to combo that scratch. So, you know, I'm just making mistakes left and right. I'm just trying to stay more. Doing my best. I'm hoping just the flop helps me. He's definitely a good opponent. He's, he's improved a lot since the last time I played him and he caught me off guard. Yeah. He, de he definitely caught you off guard in this game for sure. And I mean, uh, that currency exchange is, is like just right here, busted. He, like right here, you see, he flipped both patrons and like, uh oh, he understands that card. Mm -hmm. So it's only a matter of time. Like he's one patron away from winning and I've got to. If there's nothing I can do unless I get lucky on the flop, like even if I have to pick a patron every turn, I see a currency exchange pop up, I'm like, I get it. I can't afford that in this hand, so I might be able to. I'm playing Sigix, I'm trying to cycle through my, my deck as quick as I can to get all my good cards out. Right there, I'm like, yes, I'm going to get a Midnight Raid next hand. I need to flip something. Give me this, I get rid of other cards. Like, I'm just. At this point, like, I wonder how the game would have ended up if certain things and decisions were made different. You always ask yourself that. Mm -hmm. And watching it here, it's like, I could have definitely played certain things differently. You know, that one decision, domino up to the end. Yes, end that control. getting rid of that black card in the early game, um, I could definitely mm -hmm. see, because you had a lot of ways to, to manipulate the top of your deck. Um, that is that is one thing that you succeeded at probably better than Steve in this game because um, mm -hmm. you had a lot of Sigic stuff to man manipulate your, your top deck and I think it would have been a lot of a closer game even with the currency exchange and I don't mm -hmm. think you would have been as pressured to really you know play the tavern to where he doesn't get stuff out of there mm -hmm. so um and I mean, sometimes that, that is, it's the domino effect. Like you said, it's, you know, it happens. You make one mistake that might seem like you're doing the right play. And mm -hmm. I mean, I could see it was either that or like the Sigic one gold one, right? I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I could see where you were going with that. Um, I, I probably would have gotten rid of the Sigic one at that time just because... I know if the tavern starts getting black cards and, you know, if I get a Midnight Raid, then that card is mm -hmm. pretty good. And I can get other Sigic cards because there's generally That's people true. don't like to play the Sigic deck um, or don't mm -hmm. understand how to fully play it correctly. That's so. right. And right here you see, like, my thinking was, okay, I'm going to be playing Sigic anyway. There's no black contract cards up. I can just cycle through as quick mm -hmm. as I possibly can. To prop the double combo with my um, midnight raid, mm -hmm. so that was my thinking behind it. But the problem is, if you saw in his last hand, he bought like he's buying as many of those cheap contracts as he can to just get them out of there. So I kind of did mm -hmm. three hands, right? And I know right now I'm like on the back foot. Like he plays, if he gets his currency exchange again, flips two patron. That's yeah. I'm like I have to flip the patron every turn. Even though I need the power and I need those cards, like technically I probably could have used the Grand Master for just not, you know. But like I said, he really played well and he made like at this point I'm playing his game, you know. So I'm trying to get rid of rips as quick as I can so I can get as many of my my cards as the cards as I want. And at the moment I'm just a bit of luck too, like a few of these switches and stuff like with the on the patron with the um red eagle deck he, maybe it's luck or maybe he set it up that way see i see the mm -hmm. bam right there i'm like i'm in trouble and, yeah and then and there you go um yeah. i mean it was it was a pretty well played game by steve like he he knew what he needed to do and like i said uh -huh. you know he was feeling you out kind of seeing where you were going with it but i feel like we both were right you know yeah. it's and he, caught, it, he caught me off guard that's for sure he caught you off guard and then he started talking a little bit of trash uh with mm -hmm. you because i remember we were all in psn chat 
and he's like, hey, I'm only playing two games. And then this yeah. is the game where you show him, no, 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 no. You know, you show him yeah, why I'm you have made it to the year. finals, you know, both mm -hmm. uh, months in a row. And, you know, mm -hmm. it, it was really anybody's game in anybody's uh, place, mm -hmm. you know, to win this August tournament between you two. Um, it was mm -hmm. it was a very close match uh, all together. So yeah, this, this this match here, without spoiling too much for the, for the viewers and stuff, is a very close match. And... Me and Steve both were sweating bullets playing this one, that's for sure. Yeah. And, uh, it was, you know, I guess you did say that in the end I do I do come back um, and really rub it because there was a lot of uh, smack talk after that mm -hmm. one. You know, he, he thought he had it. He's like, okay, I've got him down. And I'm like, I know how you play now, and I've got this. Now, right here is also a good, good topic right there. Bang, I could have got the uh, Black Feather Knight right there, which is actually really good card early game mm -hmm. problem is you'll never be able to come back it's like a three but that's they have to sacrifice three power to destroy that card early to do that but i didn't grab it because not only does he have to waste three power he could also use the sigic um patron over mm -hmm. there to destroy it and seeming i know he likes to use patrons i didn't risk it but instead i went for the save sigic two and getting a rip so then I'm like, I'm going to play the gold game and I'm going to play a bit later. You know, and bam, there's that currency exchange right there. I know that's like, I can't make anything like that. And, the, and uh, that is that is actually a very good thing to to do against somebody that plays the patron game, you know. Especially mm -hmm. if there's a grandmaster um, deck around, don't even play two yeah. patrons. Just play one and then sack them at the end of turn if it's something that yep. you could potentially do. Um, and you could just play, you know, the get as much points as you can. Try to combo mm -hmm. off. Draw cards, you know, especially in the crow deck like this, uh, with the crow yeah. deck in, in hand. And well, the Sijik deck is so good at, like, people underestimate the pack in your deck. Oh, absolutely. Right first, like, the Scrying Globe there. Most people don't think much of it, but that's two gold, and I can cycle through two mm -hmm. cards. And then and you, grab, well you grab you grab the currency grab <laughs> exchange from Bam, Steve. Straight away. I knew that hand, like, ahead that I would get that. So that's why I played that gold, like, vantage early. Because if I got the Black Feather Knight, I get one gold, and then he's just going to destroy that with his next hand. I wouldn't have been able to afford that currency exchange. You know, like, that decision there from the first hand has already set me up. Now I know he's on the back foot. So I've got some good cards. He doesn't really have too much yet. You know, I, I'm sitting pretty right now. Now the pressure is on him what to do. And, and there we go. He grabs the black pepper. And I know, well, I can just use the Sigic to destroy it. And I'm getting rid of the patron things mm -hmm. because I know he likes to play that. <laughs> no extra patrons for him. And I'm going to stay on top of it. I'm not going to let him go ahead. Yeah, I really, I no, really that, like that six agent, uh, gold guy to sack. Man, he is really good. He is early game, like the first five hands. If mm -hmm. you can get him, that's an extra two gold every hand, and no one wants to really sacrifice. I think it's two gold, two power to kill that. To them, it's like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. But early game, when you don't have all rips, big hands, like that two gold, that's up really quick. And then they have to waste two power to try and get rid of it. So right now I'm I'm sitting real pretty. I've got a good gold game, and now I just you know I have a bit of power as well. Scratch. So I was bam able to there. Now I think I made a mistake here, where I should have got rid of the black sacrament. Yeah. I didn't realize instead of getting a writ. And or sometimes you can play it into like right now I'm like, but right here he plays it well, so I'm like oh I'm gonna get rid of that black sacrament. I'm gonna destroy that. But if you watch, he's smart about it. I'm like, oh, that, that card's gone. He actually sacrifices it right here. He gets rid of my card. And then there's an ambush up. He realizes that and you can't do anything and he sacrifices. Right there was various, a very, that's how you know he's a good player right there. So, like, he knew it was going to get destroyed anyway. So, but I wonder, like, if he kept that, you could have could have played out differently. Bam, there's the Midnight Raid, the card that everyone dreads to pop up on the tablet. 
<laughs> I really do think he was just right. trying to catch up on uh, knowing that you had currency exchange and That's in your right. deck. Um, I mean, I but could I be, could see that. But to be fair, like right now, if you look, you would think he's winning. He's got the better deck right now. He's four. So, you know, I have a really good gold game right now, and I'm sitting pretty, but now I need to make well, You know? So, I know he just sacrificed one of his crews, like his main crew there, so that's... If anything, that worked in my favor. Even though early, like short term, that helped him out, mm -hmm. long term, it could have made a big difference, because I don't make that much gold. So out of being an ambush or a magic patron, it would have probably stayed up for quite a while. You know? Mm hmm So I like yeah, right I like he... the fact that he took the mine away from you. Um mm -hmm. that that, very smart. that could be like very bad for him. He knew because I had two grandmasters. Mm hmm And so that was really Well, I mean you could have gotten a turn where you got, you know, ten to twelve gold and just kinda came back in a little bit, maybe turned the crow. Um, in mm -hmm. your favor at that point, and kind of like pressured him a little bit to to keep getting prestige there. Um, yeah, I mean, depending on how the tavern you know would turn out and such, but mm -hmm. well, right there you see like mm -hmm. uh, the red eagle thing came up where you can get rid of two. Yep. Two. Um, ta I couldn't do anything right there, but I knew those two cards he needed to stay in the way. Mac Daddy's D's on a patron almost win. So, and then I played an agent too. So I'm just like, oh, okay. Gotta keep an eye on that. Hopefully, and then we can, we can, Black Zachary comes up just. <laughs> yeah, I pro me. I don't know if I, I don't know if I would have, yeah, I don't know if I would have picked the Black Sacrament there. Um, yeah, because I was sacrificing mm -hmm. anyway. You were sacrificing so. anyway. Uh, you would have had but an extra, like, 14, so you could have probably gotten that 10 and then mm -hmm. gotten the, the 3. I don't know if, if you had... Uh, yeah, you had something to, to get rid of. That's probably what mm -hmm. I would have done in, the, in that scenario. And then yeah. you would have seen the same cards come up, um, potentially. That's, that's true. Yeah. But one thing that I really... See that 9 High Graven card that mm -hmm. I got? That thing gives you three power and it combos with my midnight raid that I can keep up all the time. Like that three power is actually really strong. Mm -hmm. And this Grand Masters, you can play it one hand and then sacrifice it. And that's by itself, that's all power for one card. Oh, so I, absolutely. absolutely. The, mm -hmm. the reasoning behind it is because you were, you were going to get that extra two gold. Um, and I don't yeah. really think he could have had the resources to get the nine power card at that point mm -hmm. i think you had the edge there to to get the, the would, higher well look at it right now like look he's probably thinking he's to he's at 27 million mm -hmm. that's be on sacrifice he's at 34 like right now i'm technically i'm in trouble but now you know if you think of it like that way I'm kind of in trouble at this point, but I'm not worried at all. I have a pretty strong deck, and I know I'll be fine. So, right here, I'm just like gonna, I bought that to sacrifice that to get some more power. Yeah, man. That catch up right there, that was like, I went from 9 to 23 in one hand. So now my deck's now. Yeah, and look at that. And look at this beauty. I mean, granted, you you would have gone from 23 to 33, potentially, because let's just pretend that mm -hmm. that 9 card was the, the the 10 agent, and you had the luxury mm -hmm. um, exports in there, too, to combo it off. I mean, mm -hmm. That's true, yeah. that would have been pretty nice juicy hand as well, potentially. That because even that, like that 10 card, even just using that to acquire another good card, mm -hmm. sacrifice that card... That's a lot of power. Yeah, because right you would have, you probably would have picked um, either the six Sigic or the six Crow, and then mm -hmm. just, you know, pop that off to to good old Grandmaster, um, yeah. you know, patron, <laughs> get out of here. Yeah, like right now at the moment, I'm just contemplating, looking at my decisions, and who should I sacrifice here? Yeah, I get rid of because I just played my Midnight Raid, mm -hmm. and I know I'm not going to get another black. Before my next one, 
So. I think I would have just left. I know you took the the glove here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I would have just left it alone. Yeah, I should have like I risked it a mm-hmm. bit there because something else could have came up. Yeah, if it did. I think I would have just uh, left it alone there because you're. I'm not gonna play it. Yeah, right. exactly. Um, so that's that's something that you know maybe in the future, people could mm-hmm. could take this game and learn from it in a way. Yeah. Because he yeah, just, he, he just gets he even. just so gets he even. Mm-hmm. But I think I look at his deck too. So is it this hand? Like I already know. What, I know this is kind of. It's in kind of. I like quickly have a look. Always paying attention to what my upper opponent's doing. Right? So. See, oh, this is yeah. So. I think I do. Pretty sure I do throw here. Yeah. But it's risky. So before I do it, I check his deck. And I go, okay, the most I quickly do the mess in my head. I'm like, okay, the most he could make is maybe ten power. So, and he, so but then he has to also. So right then I knew I have to pull the trigger. That's another thing a good player knows is when to pull the trigger. You know, everyone in this game will have a strong hand, and usually maybe a weak hand unless they have the eagle deck to get rid of cards or situ. Like. Excuse me, that um, you gotta know when to pull the trigger as well. Yeah, like right here, I pulled the trigger at the right time. That is definitely uh, one of the things that I need to learn um, when to do it. And mm-hmm. if somebody pulls the trigger on me, a way that maybe I could get out of it. Um, I do this a lot in Magic: The Gathering because you're you're when you're in a spot like that, you play to your outs. So. Mm-hmm. That's exactly. that's definitely something, and here you go, <laughs> Mac Daddy's. I don't. Know. Yeah, he's like, I need a second. He's like, oh, yep. Was, a lot of smack talk was going a bit between us. We're both Australian too, you know, so that just comes with the territory. I think he and, picks uh, he picks a different patron here. He does. He picks the Saint Pauline. He picks the red, the red patron here. So it's Instead a little bit prestigious. different. Um. In my opinion, I think that was a very smart play of him to do it was. because he knew you weren't going to put agents on the board for him to What's do the really patron. What's really funny is I love to think what the viewers here who are watching and stuff will do in this situation. So if you look at this flop, in my situation, this is a tough one. You have a scratch or a volley, mm-hmm. you, I, but there's a rally up. So you either play the power game or you play the gold, the gold game. game. The gold game, yep. And that's where I'm stuck, like, in my mind, it's no question. I'm going to get that scratch and try combo it real yeah. quick. Because that's three gold right there. Yeah. Th- but then an armory pops up. <laughs> I just that's think a lot of power. I just think that yeah. was a little bit of bad luck in the tavern flop there, too. Yeah, um, is, I mean, he know. did he did get this. And I knew when this card came out, he was just going to get that rally away. Um, uh-huh, that was that was very and strange. not only that but you have the the toll of flesh there and mm-hmm. obviously you're already playing the crow game I have, I have to grab you that. have to grab that instead of the volley yeah, yeah. So. and then i know he's probably going to grab the volley mm-hmm. so i'm hoping that i can get the uh the squawking right there but yeah. that's a strong card too so i start like okay i'm gonna i'm actually gonna get a pretty strong purple deck here i'm not too worried about his red hand you know, and it, this is the, my second hand, mm-hmm. second or third hand. You know, and then a toll of flesh comes up again. So I'm like, oh, I want to get that, and I get lucky and bam, yep. to get that. So now instantly I have four, five, very cards. Four, and they're very five, strong five. ones too. They're very yeah. strong crow cards, obviously. So we both have really strong. Mm-hmm. Now it's just luck. I, right at this point, we have no way of cycling. Yeah, and, and and look at this hand. This is such a bad hand for you. Um, there is oh, yeah. there is luck involved in here, but I mean the most you can do here is is literally like just maybe try, get a red, maybe try to get a red and then like toss that uh you know that two power into the into the mix. That's probably what I would have done. Um, I can't remember if that's what you did or not. Um, but it's it's yeah, it seems there like the go. play that you you would do here. Like I I would so usually most plays would most of the time you want to get rid of the fortifier. Right? Mm-hmm. So, but I know he's playing red and he needs, he's playing four, and I got a lot of gold. I need every little bit of time. Mm-hmm. So, in that situation, you know, you know, most people would try to get rid of it. Even though I'm not playing the red deck, but still, see, 
now look at the he's already at 15 points. <laughs> I'm like oh my god he's gaining a lot of time yeah it's Wait. it's a little bit rough it's you a know, little bit rough and, and then he takes my pillar as well so, not only that but look look at that tavern then, flop right there that was absolutely disgusting <laughs> the Steve probably got the biggest smile on his face yep. like the magic point he's sitting pretty right now mm -hmm. you know he sacrificed his card he's i'm like oh no i'm in i think i'm in trouble like look i'm getting really good cards but the problem is that i'm not making a lot of power so right here i buy this to try to sacrifice just to make some power like yeah i could have bought the other one the uh yeah but you're you're in trouble power. here because I'm he's at 25 now, mm -hmm. you know? so right here i'm like okay i can do something you know? this is pretty good but i still have all these nasty ass coins in my hand it's a race at this point yeah i mean this and this is a winning. really good hand right here from you uh -huh. and not only that but you get another crow um deck and i mean that fortified yes it does it's it's one power so yeah. why not like, it adds up it adds so it adds up it. really really well and so i wonder right here what would you see i'm trying to get rid of all these like i could have told to, oh should grab should grab the increasing that was oh i can there we go yeah so, yeah but then it, I, the armory really pops, pops up, up. <laughs> yep. like well, how much like Oh my god, it's I I feel like I'm I'm just cursed on these final matches. Yep. No, I think that's what it is <laughs> because both times I've made it to the third match, mm -hmm. and you know, see right here I could like, the armory. I think it's no, it's no, it's at this point like he's already made forty one, and yep, yeah, and it's 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 just game over, and you know, yeah. Steve just wins the the august tournament there to him he you know so yeah the tavern was against me there you know what more can you really do so i mean it was it was a lot of fun like i like i said um it was a very very cool tournament it definitely better than the last one um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm hoping they just keep getting better yeah, better. they just keep getting better and better. Like I just, I'm waiting for, you know, one day, maybe, you know, the September tournament will just blow me away. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited to get to Christmas too and see, you know, mm -hmm. all these good players that have won the tournament. Plus, you know, whoever gets in those last three seats just gets, you know, pretty well and and see what happens there because at that point i think everybody would have had the same time to to get better at the game and let's you know kind of see what happens because there are so some sleepers like there's a small little thing but uh who's, was it, was that pluto pluto Pluto's house? no 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 the this this tournament was hosted by mr fiddlepont there you go, and like even the house decorations and stuff, it's really creative. Like yeah. people, the game balls, like it's a little thing, but it's like, yeah. adds the atmosphere, right? Yeah. Uh, last last tournament we hosted it at Mrs. Fiddle. Um, she had made a you know a space for us to do it, and mm -hmm. she actually sent me a text this morning and and asked me if we could use Mr. Fiddle's house since he had been working on it. And I, you know, obviously I'm gonna say yes. Um, it wasn't really set in concrete before. Mm -hmm. So I said, why not? Let's do it. It was it was good fun. Like I loved what he did with the place and the little gaming arena. It really felt like you see no one. You really sitting down playing cards, like you can role play a little bit. You know, we have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. And it's good, to, good to see more people show up too. Yeah, and not only that, um, you know, here's here's the bracket from the tournament here, and as as you can see, like Jen literally just dominated <laughs> the losers bracket <laughs> there. Um, uh -huh. Like I said, she's an underdog, you know. It's you know she she had to um, she had to play Mag Daddy, who was the oh, the yeah. winner. So I'm mm -hmm. wondering what would have happened. Had she not mm, had to play Mac Daddy in the first round, because I think she probably could have made it to top four. Um, no, you're not wrong. So, sure. I could see maybe if um, I mean Donut's a really good player too. I'm not gonna say um, not, mm. but 
you know, between Madame Meow and Donut, like maybe one of those two guys wouldn't have been in top four and it would have been her. Uh, so mm-hmm. that that would be interesting to to see. And like I said, you just got to show up and hope mm-hmm. that on the day that the odds and the luck is in your favor. Because, yeah, like bosses have to verse me twice each yeah. time, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, like it, anyone's game, really. Mm-hmm. And maybe Jen could have got a flop like Steve did against me. And, yeah, and oh. another thing is um, maybe some people don't understand that the the first two rounds actually are very rough because they're only best of ones and not mm-hmm. best of threes. So you know if we yeah, you got rounds. yeah they're they're knockout rounds. Uh, granted, that's why we have a losers bracket. Um, I adopted it mm-hmm. in in the first tournament because I said, well, you know, people want to play. So, yeah. you know, let's keep them playing a little bit. So we mm-hmm. adopted the loser's bracket uh, where, you know, people, whoever lost, would play each other and such. And, I mean, it, it, it works out really well. We're going to keep doing that. Uh, Jen, you know, she does get the um, the blue tapestry mm-hmm. that is uh, oh, in the rewards. So she does get that for getting that loser's bracket winner. And of course, Mac Daddy not only gets a seat, he gets money. Uh, you're gonna get money too. Um, and then Donna <laughs> and Madame are gonna get money as well. But Mac Daddy gets the that purple sweet tapestry as well. So that's, great. that's like you do really well. Like even just showing up the prizes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like the entry fee is is very small, but the prizes and the mm-hmm. the memories and the fun we have with each other. It's yeah, we all remember it. You know. And the next month that comes around for the next tournament, you know, people are talking about the last matches they had against the person and what happened last time. And I'm going to beat you this time. You know, I've got better. I got a new strategy. It's, it's everyone's good sports about it. We all have great. Time. Yeah, I mean, Riders are amazing. You know, it's you do a good job. It's pretty. It's pretty awesome um, how it's been. You know, recently with these tournaments. Mm-hmm. Not only that, but like. The, the true players to watch, uh, the top two, are definitely you and Madame Meow right now. Because she kind of mm-hmm. came out of nowhere. Um, yeah, she did. And Jen, Jen, is, Jen is there, too. Um, mm-hmm. I just, I really, you know, it's kind of like, what if she hadn't played the tournament winner in the first round? And then you know Boss, you know, else? Boss could have probably gone a little bit further, too, mm-hmm. had she not had to play you in the, in the second round. Because... She did play you. Um, she didn't play you in the first round this time. No, second round. but she got you in the second. So yeah, that's you know who else is a underdog who unfortunately had to play tonight who couldn't make it. <clears throat> so it was really good. Is uh, Edge? NFU, Edge was, mm-hmm. She's she's a tough opponent as well, and she understands the game too. And it's a shame she couldn't make it tonight, but I uh, understand life sometimes happens. And yeah, <coughs> you know. but she's also a good one to look out for. She made it the first time, and mm-hmm. she, she made it to she won two, three matches. I believe she nearly got in there, and then she had to burst me. Up. No, yeah. she she <laughs> was uh, one of the players to watch in the last tournament report. She um, was. She was. Like, I played her a few days before, and I was like, oh, but she had to beat me a few times, you know. Yeah. And she beat, we did a best out of three, and I did end up winning, but she had me on my toes. I actually had, you know, I started sweating a little. I didn't expect it, and that's another one to watch out for. Now, I'm sure people want to know when is the next tournament. Yes, we do. And this this is the best part. This is the best part because the next tournament is actually going to be pretty Wait, close to a, a month from now on September 24th. So oh, nice. the next tournament is going to be on September 24th where we're, we're going to have some fun um, at that tournament. Obviously, uh, Mac Daddy and Pluto are welcome to join us back mm-hmm. at the tournament because you can play um, in in the tournament even if you have won your seat. You just can't win it again and give it to somebody else. So I need my revenge. Dude. You need. Well, I mean, <laughs> hey, if you meet if you meet each other in the finals again, um, uh-huh. it's just gonna be a like a, a grudge match because you already have your uh-huh. seat at that point. So it's going to be of like, hey, this is a rematch of of last month. And let's see, you know, how things are. So, mm-hmm. 
that's gonna be interesting um but thank you again bolt for for being um here with this tournament report this you know we're gonna we're gonna try we're gonna try something different next next uh, month. We are still gonna have a tournament report. It's just gonna be a little bit shorter. There's not gonna be um, as much commentary. The um, there is going to be some commentary, but it's gonna be with JP if I can convince him to to do some commentary while the games are actually going on. So. Mm -hmm. Live yeah, be yeah, it won't be it won't be live, but we'll record it live um, at yeah, that yeah, point. But uh, it it would be pretty cool too. I was hoping. Yeah, people's perspectives <laughs> yeah. I was I was actually hoping that you would lose, not that you would lose, that you would win this oh. tournament, so you could potentially uh -huh. be in the commentators box with us uh, mm -hmm. next month. But maybe we have to wait a month. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I have to wait another month. Yep. So, and Oct yeah. the well, the October match uh, uh, tournament is going to be after the 24th as well. So, it's going to be a little bit of a late one since mm -hmm. uh, Merck and I are going to be in Europe for a good portion uh -huh. of that month. But, yeah, so we're going to have some, not only, you know, the tournament report on the side, it'll be a little bit smaller, but we'll have an actual in you know live game commentary while the tournament is, is going on so that should be a pretty cool thing to to look forward to and maybe we can get jpy convinced to to play in these <laughs> for sure okay well thank you so much bolt for for joining us tonight um obviously we have discord boosters that boost our server thank you so much um thank you very much hopefully you guys get on the patreon bandwagon and then we have our our actual teams and pvp night i think scoring said that she's gonna start it just saturday nights now saturday and yep. then um we'll move forward from that depending on you know how people are but it's gonna be on saturday nights so that should be good and um, one thing is a new segment that I'm doing is going to be um, a weekly cougar talk um, where I just pick like a random topic and I don't know, I might actually grab you or Jen uh, or JP or Bob and we'll have a little banter about like a specific thing. It'll be a 10 to 15 minute kind of little who talk of what's going on uh, maybe a little bit of gossip from the guild I don't know something <laughs> it's always gossip. we'll talk we'll talk about the panty raid tonight I don't know <laughs> something <laughs> uh -huh. so that that'll be something interesting that we're doing weekly now so like again guys thank you so much for watching have a good night <laughs>